man, phantom, phantom, phantom. Is this a project I still have conviction in? Am I buying phantom? Am I still holding? Is this a project I want to be holding in the next cycle? A lot of you guys have been asking me, why have I not posted a video on phantom? A lot of you are saying, have I lost conviction in it? Have I given up on it? Maybe I've, you know, no longer liked the project. Guys, first and foremost, we need to understand that if I'm investing in the crypto, it's not correlated to how many videos I do or do not make on the video, right? We need to understand Phantom fundamentally was a project which years ago I started making videos on. Not because I thought it was, you know, uh, you know a great video to make and it's going to get loads of views. No, because nobody was talking about it at the time. Nobody was talking about Phantom. And when I was doing my research, my research for my investments, I saw it as an opportunity. I looked at the TVL stats. I looked at the market cap. I was like... This does not stack up. It's hugely undervalued. And I share my spreadsheet and I share my analyses with you guys. And a lot of you guys join the community from that, right? You really enjoyed the updates. You felt the same. Maybe you invested in Phantom as well, or you first came to hear about Phantom from me. And so fundamentally, that's what I'm here to do. I'm not like these other YouTubes that just searches whichever crypto is trending and then post a video on that topic. No, I'm here to give you the updates that actually matter. And I actually share the research I'm doing for myself. So when I find a new project for myself, I share it with you guys. When I change convictions on my project's beliefs, I share it with you. I'm not married to any project. I couldn't care less, right? They don't pay my bills. I have to invest. I'm an investor. I'm a trader. I have to pick the all coins that I want to hold. And so I don't care if the project doesn't deliver on what it said it's going to deliver or if something changes, I'm out. I don't hold any loyalties to any of these projects. I could care less. I hold them and I'm getting out. And if my conviction changes, I share that with you guys transparently. And so the question is, Phantom, have I changed my mind? Well, for now, we have to understand what is the journey that Phantom's been on, right? This is a project that has always delivered from a technical perspective, but has always struggled from a marketing perspective. And we've made no hidden secret about that, right? We've posted about that many times. In fact, we even held Simone Pompose, the CMO of Phantom, to account on that on this very channel in the podcast we did. We said, what are you going to do for marketing? How are we going to improve it? Because at the moment, you've got great tech, but nobody knows you exist. Can you improve on that bit? And so we've been through the ups and downs, right? We posted videos when Andre Crony left the project and then returned. And then some people obviously say he never left. He was working on it in the background. Whatever happened, it doesn't matter. Right now, he's invigorated. He's working on the project. He's got a key role. Michael Kong is there. They've got Bernard Schultz. They've got a great team. And they're working on their Sonic EVM, which is fantastic. I hope it's not delayed. I hope there's no, you know, difficulties or mispromises there. I hope it's delivered. I hope it hits, you know, the, the expectations that the market has been led to believe it will. That's going to be important. But they still got to figure out that marketing piece as well. Will they capture the imagination? That's the bit I cannot vouch for, right? That's the bit you've got to take a risk on as an investor. The reality is if we knew for fact that everybody's going to be talking about Phantom in this cycle, then it's a 100% it's a conviction play, right? But no investment is. It takes a little bit of a risk. And that's the risk with Phantom. I actually believe they're going to deliver on the tech. I think the tech, tech tends to be their strong point as a team. They've always managed to nail having innovative and cutting edge tech. The problem for them still will be the marketing. Can they capture the imagination? Remember I used the example of a meme coin? A meme coin has, in most cases, has zero technology, right? Nowhere near the block finality, the, you know, the speed, the safety of a real layer one solution. But what do they have? Marketing in abundance, social community in abundance, capturing the belief of people in abundance. And that's the bit that the winning layer one solutions will manage to do in this next cycle. Who's it gonna be? Which ones are gonna be the winners? It's tough to know, right? But ultimately, we have to invest in the ones we think are going to do well. And remember, our job as investors is not to catch them all. This is not Pokemon. I am not going to catch every single crypto that does well. There'll be plenty that I miss, but I don't need them all. That's not the point of this game. Nor is the point that every single one of the cryptos that I invest in has to do really, really well. No, that's not the way I invest. If you take any great investor, whether it's Warren Buffett, if you take Charlie Munger, if you take any of the big VC players that are operating in Silicon Valley or wherever they're operating nowadays, right? They don't want to win every single investment. No, they'll make 20 startup investments and they hope that a couple become really, really special. A couple do okay, a couple break even, and a handful, sometimes the majority, fail. That's the investment thesis, right? And I'm happy for the same type of my portfolio. I don't expect every single altcoin that I'm investing in to succeed. No, that's not the game. A couple have to out succeed. A couple have to do okay. The rest can lose or break even and we're going to be good. That's investments. I'm not going to catch them all. Now, do I believe in Phantom still? Yes. Am I holding? Yes. Can that change? Yes. 
And if it does change, I will update you guys. If fundamentally something happens with the team, if they change, if they get hacked, if something happens, if they stop delivering on what they promised, if they keep delaying Sonic EVM, for example, then of course my conviction is going to change. If the team keeps changing, I'm going to change as well. And I'll bring you guys those updates transparently. If I find another project which I prefer, I will share those as well. That's what this channel is about, sharing my research. That's all it is sharing the research that I'm doing for my portfolio with you. Maybe you find it useful, maybe you don't, but hopefully you do. Now, if you actively want to trade with me, you can do so as well. Ijazcrypto.com forward slash TG, the link is in the description. Name one other crypto trader who shared every single trade of theirs for a year straight, one whole year. Every single trade, you can see my report, you can see the exact trade I've taken, you can see the stop loss, you can see the take profit, you can see when I flop trade, you can see when I win trades, it's all there. Let's start holding these other so-called traders to the accountability. I challenge them to do the same. Post your trades too, every single one of them. Not just when you suddenly get one on a thousand X leverage and then you share it. I take long only trades, I take spot only, so I've got two hands behind my back and I'm still outperforming a lot of these guys, these so-called traders, right? So be careful who you watch, who's actually delivering results, who's actually sharing sound advice with you, because ultimately that's what's gonna make the difference for you guys. Don't listen to the nonsense, the flex stuff, all the stuff with no substance behind it. Are they actually trading the market? Have you seen their trades? Have you seen the returns they generate? Have they shown you a losing trade? Always doubt a trader that hasn't showed you a losing trade. Like, we lose all the time. I hit stop losses all the time. It's part of the game. But I win more than I lose. My risk management is tight. And over the long run, I do well. And same with Phantom. Whether Phantom becomes a winner or a loser, it's part of my portfolio. It's a small section of the layer one section of my portfolio. I've said that for two years straight on this channel. Just because I make videos on it doesn't mean it's the biggest part of my portfolio. No, Bitcoin's the biggest part of my portfolio. Right? You guys know that. You have to practice sound risk management, sound diversification, portfolio management, all the stuff that's boring to you because you just want to have an altcoin which goes a thousand X. I know, I know, but I'm just going to keep telling you the boring way because that's the way that works. And you'll come back five years from now, six years, from now, seven years from now. He just told me, but no, I wanted the flashy lights and the glamour and the 1000 X, but he kept telling me and I didn't listen. Take this as a warning, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to smash the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.